Here, we consider reduction formulas for integration by parts. Now, when I need to do a multiple integration by parts, I have four options. First option, work out your multiple integration by parts by hand. That'll be our slowest method. Second method, if our integrand is of a certain form, we can partially memorize the answer. Then, if I take the derivative of that partial answer, I get the coefficients by matching to the integrand. Third method, the tabular method. This will be our quickest method, but we need to practice to get good with it. Finally, we have reduction formulas. The idea here, we need to do only one integration by parts, then to get okay, any of our answers, we just have to do a repeated application of the formula that comes out. Now, quick review of integration by parts. Our formula, we have indefinite integral of u dv equals uv minus indefinite integral of v du. To get our formula, just remember we're undoing the product rule for derivatives. So if I take the derivative of u times v, I get derivative of u times v plus u times the derivative of v. Then we're just going to take the indefinite integral of both sides. Okay, the indefinite integral cancels out with the d. Then we just push things around to get our formula. Now, the next thing we need is just how do we figure out which function we should use for u? And that's just given by this mnemonic here. So L-I-A-T-E. So your first choice for your u function is logarithm, then inverse trig, then algebraic, then trig, then exponential. Now, we consider the reduction formula where the integrand is of the form x to the n, e to the ax, where n is a positive integer. We need two pieces of information. The first is our base case. So this will be when n is equal to 0. So the indefinite integral of e to the ax dx is equal to 1 over a e to the ax plus our constant of integration. Then we have the reduction formula. Indefinite integral of x to the n e to the ax dx is equal to a function minus indefinite integral with x to the n minus 1 the integrand. So what happens here? If I want to evaluate indefinite integral of x to the n e to the ax, we use our reduction formula to get to an indefinite integral with x to the n minus 1. We apply it again to go from x to the n minus 1 to x to the n minus 2. And I keep repeating until I get to our case in 1. Now, that's a lot of bookkeeping, but it's still better than working out those integration by parts by hand. So here we work it out once, and then we just keep reapplying this formula over and over again. Now, C2. This is just integration by parts. So we have x to the n, e to the ax. We go to our mnemonic, and we see that algebraic, x to the n, comes before exponential. So x to the n is going to be our u function. Whatever's left over, we call dv. So it's e to the ax dx. I solve for du. We take the antiderivative to get v, and then I apply integration by parts. So I multiply down the diagonal. Okay, that's that term there. We subtract off what we get. We take the indefinite integral of the product going up this column. So that's this part right here. For an example, let's consider the indefinite integral x plus 1 squared e to the 2x plus 3 with respect to x. Now, before we can apply our reduction formula, we need to clean up our integrand. So, these terms don't look like anything that our reduction formula applies to. First, e to the 2x plus 3, we can rewrite as e cubed times e to the 2x. We'll pull the e cubed out in front until we get to the very end. Then, I'll expand the x plus 1 squared to get x squared plus 2x plus 1. Multiply that through e to the 2x. We get three terms, each one that our formulas apply to. Now, for our formulas, we're going to have a equals 2. So we'll write our formulas out with that substitution. And now I can start applying our reduction formula to each of our terms. So 
We'll start on the right and work our way left, since the answer for each term on the right is going to apply to the one on the left. For e to the 2x, we just get a 1 half e to the 2x plus c. For the 2x e to the 2x, okay, I'll pull the 2 out. Then we just apply our formula with n equal to 1. So we'll have 1 half x e to the 2x minus a half. Then that's going to go away, so we have indefinite integral e to the 2x dx. That we just figured out. So we're going to get this, which I can rewrite like this. Then for the x squared e to the 2x, we apply our formula with n equals 2. So we'll have 1 half x squared e to the 2x minus 2 over 2. Indefinite integral of x e to the 2x dx, and then we just work that out. So that gives us, okay, here, go to there, and then we have this coming from here. Now, I'm going to take the sum of these, and we're going to multiply by the e cubed at our constant of integration. So this is going to be our answer. Now, we always check our work. So if you know the tabular method, you could check against that. Otherwise, we could just take the derivative and check that it matches the integrand. In this case, taking the derivative means we're going to need to use product rule and chain rule. So that's going to check out. And so we have our answer. As a final note, our reduction formulas work with definite integrals. So if I consider instead the definite integral from 0 to 1 of our integrand, we can compute that using the first fundamental theorem of calculus. So I take our antiderivative from the previous board. I evaluate at 0 and 1, take the difference. Now, if I don't want to carry all those functions around to find the antiderivative, we can instead use definite integrals in our reduction formulas. So the idea is the answers that are coming out of 1 and 2 are going to be antiderivatives. So we can use definite integrals by applying the first fundamental theorem of calculus. So we take the answers from each of these, evaluate at 0 and 1, take the difference. Now, in this formula, since I'm using 0 as a limit, and we have x to the n with n a positive integer. Putting 0 into this part here is going to 0 this term out. So it makes things a little bit nicer. Now, working off of this, the cleanup is going to be exactly the same as before. We're going to go through term by term, starting here, going to there, going to there. So the work is the same, except now we're using numbers instead of functions. So we just follow our nose. When we add our three terms up, remember we multiply by e cubed. Okay, that's the term we pull out in the first step. So this is going to be our definite integral. Okay, and our interpretation is that's going to be the area under our curve between 0 and 1. Now, if I want to check my answer, well, one thing I could do, okay, if I have access to a computer, is to compute a Riemann sum. So the idea is we're going to approximate the area under this curve using rectangles. If I let the base of those rectangles be equal to 0 0.0001, okay, we crank that out with a few lines of code, we get a 180. Then if we put this through a calculator, we see that this is close to 180. So our work seems to check out. 